Hello again and welcome to the next part of the character modeling tutorial and we have a couple of things that we forgot in the last part. Um, I'm mainly talking about you know this part here and this one and these ones and I looked actually up the design once again and I figured that I had actually quite a few well you can't really call them mistakes because everyone interprets the design in their own way but uh, I figured out that there were a few ways to make this more interesting up here. I just quickly figured that out. So that's kind of a shame, but I'm going to leave it for the sake of the tutorial. But maybe uh, after finishing this, I might do some changes on my own. Um, just saying, this is not uh, about how you have to do this. So I'm creating this new object out of uh, this one here, because while well, they're they're the same material as it seems and they have similar shapes so why not just use them and to begin with I will just stretch it like that and delete everything except uh, the area that we need or actually you know what uh, talking about everyone interprets it in their own way what we'll do is the same thing let's just do our own object here I, I just separated it into a new object just so that I don't interfere with the lower part and we're going to want something similar but uh, with the same structure because I kind of like this shape here and it makes sense to put it here it kind of looks right so that's why there is no reason to get rid of it so I'm kind of letting it hover a bit above you know, um, bit above the cloth and make it, and we'll try to make it look a bit like it's uh, stretched. And you can achieve that by, you know, using a bit of the scale, um, you know, just scaling it so that it looks stretched. And also by yeah, basically by getting the dynamic right and the distance to here and making it rather straight. Uh, the only reason why it's bent towards uh, here is because there will be part that goes downwards. So I'm expecting it to uh, have an influence on this. And so uh, also the look changes a bit. So we could have a, a little step here to make it look like this part is solid and this is maybe a little bit plastic maybe um, we'll figure out a good way so now we said would go down um, just need to come up with a good way to do that meanwhile we can check if this makes you happy <laughs> I don't know this step is a good idea but not sure about um, what I just did. All right, um, let's just extrude downwards here and see what happens. <laughs> so there we go. I kind of don't get what this really is. I mean. then it would be probably a completely solid part. So that's kind of interesting though about 3D modeling that you have to interpret everything on your own and really understand how it looks like in 3D, even if it's a drawing or something you don't completely see. You have to make sense of it. So, And I'm going to leave it like that. Um, I'm just saying that I changed the design a little bit. I think it's pretty cool that way. Feel free to do it different, feel free to do it the same way it's done here. Um, every, all those ways are great. Um, one more thing we need to do is add a little circle here. So I quickly add a circle. Let's say we just want to have eight vertices. Move it to the center, go to edit mode, rotate it to, oh, that's more than eight. Something went wrong. Uh, circle, you want to have, oh, I have caps on you want to have eight and then to center with alt g 
Then in edit mode, place it, draw it to the right position. Then you can you know, snap it to the surface to roughly get the position right. I mean, you re might remember I said that it wouldn't take effect on all of them, but that's all right. We just want to have it in the right position to mirror it. Then I'll deactivate the snapping and just rotate it by hand to kind of fit the angle of the surface. So I, I, a combination of tapping R twice and once to rotate from the view and and just generally in all directions will help you to find it in the right position. And then just create kind of this button. And grid fill should somehow take care of this. Yeah. And it's now closed. Set it to smooth. Maybe add a subdivision surface modifier. I mean, doesn't hurt. It's not so many vertices that we get. Just make it maybe a bit sharp. Additional detail never hurts. And then try to make it uh, even with the, the surface below, because that will make it more believable. Yeah, kind of like that. So do we have these anywhere else here? So we might be able to reuse them later on the arm and here, but for now we don't need them. Um, one last thing is here. So I'm going to base this on you know, just a face from here. I'm just going to copy it and move it upwards. So that way we don't need to do much anymore. I'm just going to take this and position it new above somewhere. I'm just going to change the material like, as well. So delete the second one. It's a new object, by the way. I separated it into a new one. And then attach it somewhere here. So I'm not going to go much more into detail here. Just I noticed here a little issue with solid fee. Um, fixing this by hand work quickly just so that everything is really good. Much better now. And where was I? So kind of attach it I don't know, how should we touch it? There are tons of ways to do this and just have to do something that you like. So I thought that this upper part was rather stiff. While this, uh, I mean this lower part is very stiff while the upper one is kind of smooth. Um, but I'm after all going to bend this one a little bit. Great, now we have that as well. Um, I think we're going to stop here, uh, simply because our past parts were so long. I will give you a little bit of a break this time. Um, so this time the piece of cloth here is really finished. Um, nothing left to do as far as I know. Yeah, there are no buttons either. So that's it. Uh, thank you for watching. Next time we're going to continue with a different part. Uh, see you later. Bye-bye.